I take refuge in an open heart and a wise, bright mind. And in the common aspiration of all beings. I'd like to talk just a minute about commitment. Commitment as spiritual practice. First off, our world runs on commitment. And we all make many different levels of commitment. The post office commits to delivering the mail. Banks commit to handling and managing money. Farmers commit to tending their crops. With relationship, we commit to support a family, some other person. We all have commitments. However, much of the time, what we're actually committing to, when we think we're making a commitment, is we're committing to our idea. We're committing to some idea we have. I commit myself to my idea of how this relationship is going to go. I commit myself to my idea of how this community is going to operate. I commit myself to my idea of what my future is going to look like, my aspiration. We're not committing ourselves with an open heart to the mystery, because the future is always mysterious. Instead, we are committing ourselves, we think of as commitment, to affirming something we already know. So, commitment can be used as a very important and vital spiritual practice. First off, when things are going well, by whatever definition we have, usually it means things are agreeing with me. I have a way how things should go and things are going the way I think they should go. And when things are going the way they, they should go, when things are going smoothly, it's great, wonderful, we all like that. But it doesn't require us to dig inside, it doesn't require us to find new resources, it doesn't require us to expand our life, it doesn't require us to find strength we didn't know we had. So when we make a commitment with intelligence, with consideration, making sure that it's ethical, make sure that it's aligned with our values, and we make a commitment to something, usually there's a sense of, oh, things are going well, and then when the spiritual practice starts, it starts getting rough. It starts getting rough because things are not going the way we hope they'll go. And that's where the spiritual practice begins to happen. That's where our being is called upon to drop old fixed views, to become more resilient, to become more flexible, to become more inclusive. So when we make a commitment, whether it be to a person or a group or to an aspiration, and we're walking down that line, and we begin to hit the perturbation, the friction, the, the obstacles of it, and we continue walking, then just the very fact that we are walking down that line, the very fact that we are continuing with our commitment, will begin to open up that tight nut of who we think we are, begins to, to break our fixed views. If we're only committing to our own idea of how things are going to be, then when things change and don't match our idea, we say, I'm out of here. And that, that's not very helpful because we, we, we leave to go find some place that agrees with us. And, you know, it's the way people do it all the time. From the perspective of a teacher, from the perspective of our individual lives, of course, everything is changing all the time. Everything is constantly, constantly changing. So people are flowing in and people are flowing out just the way things are. You know? We can't expect others to be different. Because human beings are change. That is nothing but change. But from the perspective of ourselves, we have the ability to actually make a commitment and to walk the course, to walk the path. So we can hold ourselves to a standard of commitment as spiritual practice, as a way of evolving, as a way of breaking up old forms, as a way of seeing something more deeply which we haven't seen before. And it's only marginally useful to hold other, try to hold other people to that. It can be supportive if we can encourage them to do, 
but usually it doesn't, doesn't work. So I encourage each person here to look carefully at your life, look carefully at what you're doing, and to make commitments and keep the commitments. If we're making commitments that we don't, that we don't continue, that we, that we break, we begin to not trust ourselves. We begin not trusting our own ability to discern what's important and what's true. So I encourage you to, whether it be relationship and spiritual practice, whether it be career, whatever it is, to clearly make a commitment and then go through the different waves of difficulty. And don't take a step back. So may may you find liberation right where you stand in the exactly in the circumstances that you find yourself in, which will change, that's a given. Liberation is not found anywhere else. So please, share your wisdom, share your resources. If you find these little nuggets helpful, share them as well. Thank you. Please visit our website at zendus.org for more information about our workshops, retreats, and opportunities to practice.